the good life full of fun seems to be the Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in the kitchen. What are we in the cucina? How you doing? What are we gonna make today? I'll tell you what we're making today. I just got back from Italy. I spent about 10 days out there, had a wonderful time. Half the week I spent down at the farm uh, and just had an exciting, uh, enriching, relaxing time really to celebrate Italy and some great recipes and some great wonderful people. I spent some time with Luigi and Valentina and, and uh, they're the caretakers uh, up at the farm at the house and just wonderful people. So uh, I wanted to share with you a recipe uh, and it's the simplest recipe I'm ever, probably ever going to share with you on uh, cooking Italian with Joe. But I'll tell you, it is absolutely delicious and it's so simple. So I had to go to a local uh, Italian store, uh, if you will, to buy this cheese. And when I'm there, it's like walking into an Italy grocery store, right? So I got, I've got some breadsticks and, uh, and some fun little uh, Italian, if you will, crackers. I got some Parmesan Reggiano. I've got some... Uh, Provolone, extra sharp. You know, I'm walking through there buying everything, right? And then I bought some, I bought some black olives, and uh, just, I just had a great time. Uh, and we bought some meats and uh, and soppressetta and uh, and just everything. And we we just had a great time. But here's the cheese. Here's our headliner. And this is cacio cavallo. Okay, so you guys have probably seen this. This is a common cheese that you'll see a lot of times in Italian stores, grocery stores, and they'll and they'll have it hanging over a string. So there's there's a string typically tied right around here, and it's typically tied to another another cheese. And cacio cavallo actually means, uh, in Italian, it means cheese over a horse. And what they would do is when they would string it to age the cheese, it would be over typically a wooden rack, and it almost like it would be over the back end of a horse. A lot of times they would carry it over the back end of a horse. So, so that's what the name means in, in Italian. It's typically a cheese that is uh, made from uh, cow's milk, though it's made from sheep uh, milk as well. And it's essentially a uh, mozzarella. So it's very common in the Puglia region, uh, and probably the best Caccio Cavallo cheese in the world comes from that Puglia region. It's also from Sicily. And essentially, you start off with a mozzarella when you make it. So you make like a mozzarella. Typically with a mozzarella, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in a salt bath. Right when you're done, you're gonna rinse it, you're gonna pull it out, and you're either gonna make a ball, you're gonna braid it, but that's it. That's essentially a mozzarella. Where this, you're gonna leave, you're gonna uh, shape it just like this with a string, and you're gonna actually leave it in a salt bath uh, many times for weeks or even a month or more, and then you're going to age it. It can be aged for anywhere from six months to, uh, I've seen, up to three years. So it's absolutely delicious. So it has a, a very earthy, a little bit of sharpness to it, and, uh, and, a, and a creamy richness to it. One of my favorite cheeses. So we're going to make essentially baked or roasted cheese, or uh, another name for it is going to be Cacio Cavallo al Forno, which basically means like a baked cheese, okay? And this is the easiest recipe you're going to have. So you're going to get a, a ball of Cacio Cavallo, and I got a beautiful pot. This is traditionally what you'll see it in, some form of like a terracotta, and they basically, we're going to slice it and put it in there. And then the only other ingredient you're going to have is some olive oil. So I always have to do my pitch. Right, so my Vito and Joe's after my two kids, and as you guys know who watch our videos a lot, uh, I have a farm in Italy and we make our own olive oil. So we actually work with several farms in the area to bring what I think is one of the world's greatest extra virgin Italian olive oil. So it's, it's earthy and it's peppery and it's grassy, it's absolutely delicious. It's all Italian olives, it's pressed mechanically right in uh, Italy and we ship it right here in the United States and bottle it. For you guys and, and I named the farm after my two kids. So you can grab it right on Facebook, you can go on Amazon, or you can go right to our, uh, our webpage which is Cooking Italian with Joe where you'll see many of our recipes posted as well. To start, I've got my dish right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a splash of Vito and Joe's, greatest olive oil in the world, there's my plug, okay, and I'm going to put, I don't know, a couple tablespoons in there, okay, and I'm going to basically just, I'm going to just let it go around the bottom of the dish, okay. And then what, it, what that's going to do is that's going to act just so it doesn't stick. And the other thing it does is the oil will get nice and hot. It'll get actually hotter than the cheese because the cheese has got a lot of moisture in it. And as a result, it'll give you a nice little crisp on the back side of the cheese where the top will kind of crisp, okay? So this is exactly how they do it in Puglia or in Sicily. And it's a great appetizer 
often that they're going to use in Italy. You'll see it on a lot of the menus, Southern Italy typically. Here's my Caccio Cavallo, right? So I'm going to, you know, watch it with your knife here, but you're going to basically just take it right down the middle, and that's traditionally how it's going to cut. So it's got a, an aged skin on the outside. And as you cut it here all the way through, what you're going to see, so that's that beautiful part of the cheese. You're going to have an age around the rind, but that creamy, earthy, mildly sharp. That's what I want, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quarter the cheese. So just cut it again in quarters. And the reason we're going to do that, and you'll see here, is it's really easy, really easy to pull that center out, okay? So again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across the middle there and I'm going to make some slices. Oh, that's good. And you're going to want to make a slice just like that because we're going to layer the slices in our in our pot. One of these will serve one person is is how you're going to cut up. So one of those would be one person and you got two. So in this case we're going to make enough for four people. So I've got all this sliced up and I'm going to keep the rinds because this isn't a cheap inexpensive cheese. So I'm going to save that. A lot of times you can nibble on that if you slice it nice and thin or you can uh, put it in different sauces and such. Grate it up. It's absolutely delicious. I'm going to grab my my pot here and then what I want to do is I want to start laying it across right inside the pot. So the trick here is to keep it as flat as you can. And we're going to do one layer across the bottom and you want everything equal space. So sometimes they've seen it just like this and it's not going to be a fondue. You're not going to dip anything in it. You're going to actually cut it. Just get all those pieces right in there. Now right, look at that. Is that beautiful? Oh, that's good. I'm going to have a little piece of Parmesan while I'm talking to you guys. That's great. Now what I'm going to do, oh that's good. What I'm going to do for the first five minutes, I'm just going to put a plate on the top because i got a thick layer of cheese in there and I want it to really get hot before that top starts to brown. And depending on how that top's going to brown, sometimes I'll put the broiler on, you know, the top element, sometimes it won't. So I'm going to set it like this. i got 375, I'm going to put it right in the middle rack. I'm going to pop it in there. I'm going to set my timer for about 10 minutes. And boy, that's going to be good. Can you guys hear that? Just pull that out. So we had about 15 minutes in with the top covered, right? And then I had about 15, 20 minutes with it off. And it just browned perfect. You got just that caramelization on the top. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, that puppy is hot. Ah, just came out. I'll tell you the smell in here. You know, there's that the deep cheese, you can like taste it right in your nose. Absolutely delicious. So that essentially is, is the baked cheese. And it's gonna be served often just like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife. Now what I did, and you'll see this a lot in Italy, they'll take uh, like a jam, like a marmalade. So I've got an orange marmalade and I've got some fig. Huh, fig marmalade, absolutely delicious, right? And then they're just gonna cut it up, if you will, and it's served hot. I mean, it's like right out of the oven. We're gonna come right across the top of the knife. So you're gonna cut it just like a pie. And again, it's hot, it's bubbling. I mean, a lot of times you'll get it right on the plate and it's bubbling. Now I like a little bit of that caramelized feel. All right, guys, here you go, right? So we've got cacio cavallo, right? So we've got our cheese and we've got our, our I, I like the, uh, the orange marmalade, my favorite. So and you're gonna hear that crust just kind of crunch. And a lot of times they're gonna bake this right in a wood oven. So I mean, it really comes out with some, you know, almost burnt, not burnt, but on the cusp of it, you know? So I'm gonna take that cheese, right? And I'm gonna put just a little hint. See that, a little bit of the orange marmalade? And it's hot. Oh my God. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. That is, mm. that is perfect. I mean, you take a little Prosecco, a little white wine shell to cut that. Oh my God. Guys, thanks so much for joining me for a phenomenal recipe, right? Baked cheese or grilled cheese or roasted cheese or Cacico Cavallo Alferno. Beautiful way to take a trip to Italy right in your own kitchen, guys. And don't forget, to visit us on our website or certainly on our Amazon or our Facebook, grab yourself a bottle of olive oil, Vito and Joe's 
bottle of olive oil or a bottle of Italy right in your own kitchen. So don't forget to shut off the TV and the radio and the electronics and spend some time with your, with your family. Set some traditions for your family and celebrate your heritage and have some fun and make a mess and enjoy yourself and tell stories and have your mom and dad there tell stories about their upbringing and if you're blessed enough to have your grandparents have them tell some stories enjoy them they're certainly not going to be there forever don't forget to check us out on our youtube channel we got all kinds i think we got over 150 videos we got over a million uh, views absolutely fantastic really enjoy it and don't forget to check us out next week for another phenomenal recipe where you can take a trip right to italy and celebrate some celebrate some time with your friends until next week guys mwah. bon appetito it's the good life.